Good morning. Let us begin with a quick summary of uh, lecture 20 and uh, move into the main topic of today's lecture which will be the two channel filter bank. Uh, again we will look at the complete development from in the in context of the mathematical analysis, uh, intuition as to what happens when aliasing occurs, where, where does the aliasing occur and what are the forms in which the aliasing uh, takes place and then uh, look at it. So the uh, review of yesterday's lecture, the key points that I uh, would like to mention, uh, so lecture 20 review, just two key points wanted to wanted to highlight. The first one is that we talked about the OFDM transmitter and we have linked OFDM transmitter is in the context of an OFDM modem, uh, the transmit section. We showed that this is identically equal in terms of functionality to a trans multiplexer which does the conversion from time division multiplexing to frequency division multiplexing. And this is from a uh, filter bank perspective. One point to mention, when we talk about TDM in the context of OFDM, uh, TDM has got many channels. Each of them you can treat it as a narrow band channel. So multiple narrow band channels. Typically in the time division multiplex system, these narrow band channels are interleaved in time. So multiple narrow band channels. On the other hand, we have a single wide band, wide band signal. Okay, so what you have done is you have taken a number of uh, narrow band signals and place them in, uh, in the frequency uh, at different center frequencies. So you get a single wideband signal and uh, this is a method that can be used to generate any wideband signal. So that is one of the strengths of OFDM that you can generate very, very uh, wideband signals, 20 megahertz, 50 megahertz, 100 megahertz you can generate uh, without increase the significant increase in complexity because what you are dealing with are primarily narrow band channels which are then getting uh, suitably multiplexed in the frequency domain. So this is the key element from uh, yesterday's uh, lecture and then we looked at the two channel uh, filter bank case and uh, the result at which we stopped. Let me just uh, pick it up from there. Uh, this is the M channel general uh, setup as we mentioned yesterday different from a trans multiplexer. Uh, the conventional uh, approach is that in a filter bank typically the analysis filters come first followed by synthesis filters. In a trans multiplexer they are reversed in terms of position because you have the synthesis happening first. Uh, but again uh, from a, a viewpoint you can study it as a trans multiplexer or as a, a conventional filter bank and we will take the filter bank, uh, the sub band uh, filter bank approach. So the filter bank's primary job in the analysis section is to take a wide band signal and to split it into sub band signals. Okay, so uh, we have taken the case of M equal to 2, we said that uh, this is a very widely used in speech and image processing using the two channel uh, filter bank you can actually generate a tree structure. Um, one, of the, uh, one of the key uh, elements is uh, why are we decimating by a factor of M, that was a question that was asked yesterday. Uh, can we do uh, greater than M, uh, can we do less than M? And uh, so the the, uh, the key uh, key points. Let me just sort of clarify that, just by way of uh, the the uh, it sort of also covers the review as well. Now, if you think of the uh, the sampling rate of x of n as some n uh, samples per second, okay, and when you look at something that has been downsampled by a factor of m, this means this would be n over m samples per second and you have m such channels, so which means that the collective data rate of these still is retained at n. Okay. So now if you did not do any downsampling at all, so if I do downsampling by a factor of m in each of the channels, then input rate, input, output. 
Okay. Output would be the after of uh, the, the the collection of all the subband signals. If you have n samples per second, this is still n samples per second. So basically, you have not allowed any additional redundancy to creep into the system. Now, on the other hand, if we had taken the case of m equal to one, so basically you did not do any downsampling. So, you downsample by m equal to 1. So, it is not the number of channels, basically I have just uh, downsampling part alone has been um, uh, set equal to 1. So, in which case if you, if you have n samples per second, um, maybe this is not, not good notation because m equal to 1 may think uh, there is only one channel. So, basically you are downsampling by 1, okay, that means no downsampling at all. So, you will get n times m samples per second. The whole idea of doing uh, subband, dealing with subbands is to primarily for compression. Now, what have we done? If you do not downsample, you have actually expanded the signal. So, you actually you are going in the wrong direction. So, the generation of subbands is really not beneficial at all. So, if you think of the primary motivation for uh, splitting a signal into subbands, one could be for spectral analysis. But if you were also thinking of it in terms of compression, uh, you would be very much interested in the case where you are. Um, uh, so now, can you go to less than n samples per second? Okay, that is a key question. Now, uh, when it comes to compression it is not only the number of samples per second, but the number of bits that you are using per. So, let us say that you are using B1 bits per, for each of the samples. So, it is B1 into n. If you end up with something which is B2 into n as your resultant, where B2 is less than B2 is less than B1, that is still compression. So, therefore, you have effectively done uh, what you achieved what you. So, it is very important to note that one is you do not allow an increase in the sampling rate, that means number of samples per second, then you also uh, reduce an, uh, the resolution with which you represent it. So, compression can happen in each of those forms. Now, can I reduce it to less than n samples per second? Can I re reduce it to less than n samples per second? If the original signal was sampled at Nyquist rate, that means you need n samples per second to represent the information. If you go anything lower than that, the, the obviously there will be, uh, because uh, this is a net rate. So, uh, you, you will run into the problems of representation. So, uh, so you, you will lose information. So, without losing information if you want to represent and if the original signal was Nyquist sampled. So, we since we do not know what the input signal is, we assume it is Nyquist sampled. So, then we say that okay, the best that I can do at, at the subband stage is to preserve the number of samples per second, not increase it, not de decrease it, will, I may run into trouble, uh, not increase it. And of course, then a, a compression can happen at this rate. So, why? we are downsampling by a factor of m. Now, uh, so when I have m channels, m channels combined with a downsampling by m, so with a plus sign, okay, m channels where each of them have got a this uh, operation, this is what we refer to as maximally decimated, maximally decimated because anything greater than m will cause your uh, uh, greater than the number of channels where m is greater, uh, you will cause you to go below the uh, sampling rate, uh, the input sampling rate which will ca cause problems. So, basically you are down sampling to the maximum extent possible, okay. That is point number one. The second point is once you have fixed your uh, uh, down sampling by a factor of m, what can you tell me about the spectrum of the signals going into the down sampler? it has to be around 2 pi over m because if it is much larger than 2 pi over m, you are going to have significant problems with aliasing. So, that is also constrained. So, your subband signals, subband signals, the bandwidth, bandwidth it should be up of the order of 2 pi over m. That again is sort of linked to it. Of course, you 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 do have uh, applications where you do non-uniform uh, um, uh, this thing downsampling, 
and uh, you can uh, one one of those uh, applications uh, if you want to think about it you visualize it is in the following manner okay so supposing i do a uh, I, I do a two channel split okay so i i won't i won't write down all the filters there's a filter here and there is a down sampling by a factor of 2 down sampling by a factor of 2 okay now i split only this branch as one more stage down sampling by a factor of 2 and this is down sampled by a factor of 2. So, now if you look at it, it looks like you have different sampling uh, down sampling in the different branches okay? because you have uh, 4 in the upper 2 branches and 2 in the lower branch. Now, it looks like you have a non-uniform system because the bandwidth of these signals are different. But it has been uh, uh, constructed in a very careful manner such that each of these upper branches have got spectrum approximately pi by 4. This the, uh, 2 pi by 4 is the bandwidth. This one will have approximately pi as the uh, pi by 2 as the bandwidth. So, again uh, uh, the non-uniform nature can come because you are having more number of uh, uh, sub bands on, on in one, one, one dimension. But uh, the key point to note is that when I am doing down sampling, I want to keep the bandwidth of the order of uh, 2 pi over m, the total bandwidth so that we can uh, we can down sample it and then preserve the uh, and, uh, and because these are practical filters. If I insist that both of them uh, are uh, let us say down sampled by a factor of 2, I do not want aliasing at all, then this will what will become. The next filter what will happen uh, that will also require uh, no aliasing. So, therefore, this will what it this, that second filter will be. Now, the problem will arise is that I do not know what happens in this information, signal is lost. right? So, if I insist that my filters be such that there is no aliasing then uh, I will be I will lose signal inf uh, signal uh, information is lost. Now, this is not acceptable because I cannot reconstruct. So, the only uh, practical uh, approach that you we will encounter is that these signals this will be slightly wider than pi by 2 to ca capture all the signals and this one will also be wider than pi by 2. So, this in overlap is inevitable. So, there is going to be some amount of aliasing. So, we kind of go into this uh, sub band uh, analysis with the, the following uh, aspects in mind. I want to down sample by the maximum uh, sam down sampling rate possible which is m. Given practical filters then each of these must have approximately bandwidth uh, 2 pi over m uh, which means that there will be overlap between adjacent sub channels uh, sub band signals which is which is fine. Uh, which may result in aliasing, but that is where the ch challenge lies and that is what we are going to be looking at in today's class. So, that is a sort of a quick uh, review of where we are. So, the two channel case, this input signal x of n which we split into a, a low pass and a high pass signal, we call that as x naught and x 1 and uh, sub down sampled each of them called it v naught v 1. Then you know there is processing, but we, we said that uh, uh, in, in the analysis stage we are saying that we are not considering the processing, it is basically those signals are connected to the synthesis filters, upsampling by a factor of 2, uh, filter, uh, uh, filtering through F0 and F1 to preserve that uh, portion of the because upsampling will produce uh, two, uh, two, two copies of the spectrum, preserve that, that portion of the spectrum that you want and then uh, produce the output signal. So, this was the uh, setup. Uh, we went through the uh, um, a few steps basically uh, simple steps of down sampling, up sampling and filtering and we said that the input output relationship is given in terms of a uh, transfer function t of z times x of z that is the input signal and a second term which uh, depends on x of minus z that is a frequency shifted version of x that is where the aliasing terms come in. If that is present at the output then there will be a distortion because I will have input output depending on x of z the input as well as x of minus z which is a shifted version. So, we need to be careful with that. So, this is this is um, pretty much where we stop we said that we could write this as an as a matrix equation which has the uh, has the following structure. Okay. Now, uh, I just wanted to quickly uh, you know just sort of uh, refresh ourselves that if you talk about H naught of z 
and h not of minus z okay h not of minus z this is if you look at it at uh, z equal to e of j omega on the unit circle this becomes h not minus e of j omega this can also be written as e of j omega minus pi okay e power j you write it as e power uh, j pi plus omega minus omega does not matter we, we uh, uh, e power j omega minus pi okay so uh, the reason we like omega is that it means it shifted the spectrum got shifted from uh, center frequency of 0 whatever the center frequency of 0 now shows up at pi so if you were to look at a, a signal or a filter of this type this is h not e of j omega and this is what h this would be the spectrum this is 2 pi this is 0 now h not e of j omega will be located at pi okay so basically it is uh, if the h not is a low pass filter h not of minus z will be a high pass filter now will the two of these filters overlap depends on the bandwidth of the signal so if you had chosen your uh, uh, original filter to have bandwidth which is beyond pi let us say uh, you, you chose uh, 2 pi by 3 so this is pi by 3 and this is pi so which means that the filters will have significant amount of overlap so I suppose that is uh, something like that so uh, uh, when you shift it you will have so the uh, notion is that uh, yes uh, we understand what h naught of minus z is now at the input i mean uh, right at the uh, subband splitting stage we said that there is a constraint on h naught and h1 that between the two of them they must capture all of the information content in the signal so if you if you happen to choose h naught as a narrow filter okay and uh, let us say this is pi by 2 pi 3 pi by 2 2 pi okay uh, uh, so basically uh, you will get a copy of these uh, of this filter there now it, it the in order for you to actually construct the subband signal this filter has to be of this type right it has to overlap it has to pick up all of the uh, uh, remaining spectrum okay so when i downsample this red signal by a factor of 2 I am going to run into severe amounts of aliasing because this is a much wider than pi by 2 and therefore there is a penalty that I will have to pay but right now all we are saying is between h naught and h1 they must capture all of the information that is all the uh, point that is being made. So uh, the, the key uh, uh, points to summarize are we typically want h naught of z to be a low pass filter then h naught of minus z which appears in our equation is a high pass filter this is h naught of z shifted by pi the frequency response is shifted by pi okay so that is that is uh, uh, observation that, that we have made and uh, we now are interested in doing the aliasing cancellation so the aliasing term aliasing term if you go back and look at the last equation that we wrote uh, the aliasing term consists of h naught of minus z f naught of z plus h1 of minus z f1 of z okay you can have a half or not doesn't matter uh, uh, maybe you just put a half also there uh, this whole thing if we call that as a of z just some transfer function uh, times x of minus z this is the contribution of x of minus z to the output so basically this is what will show up at the output of x hat of z it is not a transformation this is what shows up uh, this is the contribution there is a, uh, a t plus maybe to write it down plus t of z times x of z then you actually have an equal to sign okay so uh, this is 
this is equal to, but we are focusing on the uh, aliasing cancellation part. And uh, over a period of time, uh, uh, very clever intuitive uh, you know uh, in, uh, people with insight came up with several ways of uh, dealing with this problem of cancelling the aliasing. So, the first or the earliest uh, one the solution that had come up in terms of cancelling the aliasing. I am just right going to call it as option 1 because there are several uh, solutions that have come and again I am um, sure that as you study this problem you will see that okay yeah this is probably a very o obvious thing once you look at it uh, carefully. So, the first one uh, uh, had the following uh, uh, solution. The choice was choose F naught of Z to be equal to H1 of minus Z okay and F1 of Z to be equal to minus h naught of minus z okay. So, using these two combinations would like to now verify that a of z is equal to h naught of minus z f naught is h 1 of minus z hey, you have a plus sign you get h 1 of minus z and f 1 of z is minus 1 times h naught of minus z basically these two terms cancel giving you equal to 0 okay. Now, uh, what did this choice of filters uh, actually impose did it impose uh, uh, any awkward or uh, you know uh, unintuitive conditions. So, here is a uh, quick summary if h naught of z is a low pass filter h 1 of z is a has to be a high pass filter okay. Now, if you have split the upper branch as the low frequency components and the uh, uh, lower branch as the high frequency components on the synthesis side what should your filter f not be picking out? It should pick out the low, low frequencies right that it would make sense because the upper branch contains the low frequencies uh, components. So, when you want to reconstruct the signal you ma make the upper branch contribute the low frequency uh, co uh, portion of the signal the lower branch contribute. So, which means that f naught has to be a low pass filter because when I do upsampling by a factor of 2 I will get multiple copies f naught. Now, does that satisfy if h 1 of z is a high pass filter h 1 of minus z will be a low pass filter. So, no problem at all. So, f naught of z will be a low pass filter it is not connected to uh, h naught it is connected to h 1 uh, that, that is and f 1 of z automatically turns out to be a high pass filter and it is connected to h naught of z basically it takes the low pass filter shifts it and also adds a phase basically minus is a phase term of pi basically introduces so that those two terms can cancel each other. So, this is also another very very key element how do you cancel two signals you make sure that they have the same magnitude response and then introduce a phase of pi they will cancel each other okay. So, when you say that they have the same magnitude response very very important this is a uh, if you say that the spectrum of a signal is here and I want to cancel it. I cannot cancel it with a signal whose spectrum is elsewhere. I can only cancel when they are similar. So, uh, I cannot cancel these two on the other hand I can cancel th these two if I ensure that their magnitudes are the same and they have a phase. phase. So, basically between these two if they have same magnitude response same magnitude response and a phase offset of pi offset of pi then I can actually cancel the two spectra again very very key uh, uh, insight that happens. So, that, that is what was in what was achieved in this process you ensured that the transfer functions were the same and they had a phase shift of pi and uh, that is uh, exactly how the. Uh, so, the, the, the key point is that using this option we can cancel aliasing. So, aliasing is now uh, something that we have already handled now what what about the rest of the uh, system. So, here is the uh, remaining portion of the transfer function. So, the signal term the aliasing term has vanished. So, T of z now comes out to be one half of h naught of z 
f naught of z plus h 1 of z f 1 of z. Okay. Now, if you uh, substitute the uh, uh, expressions then we get this uh, to come out to be one half of h naught of z h 1 of minus z minus h 1 of z and h naught of minus z. Okay. Some, uh, some very interesting uh, symmetries are, are emerging um, something for you to think about and particularly uh, all the concepts from signal processing uh, now start of come into play basic DSP. However, we are going to take a, a, a very uh, a, a gener, gener, general approach where we say that okay, uh, good that we got T of Z. If I try to look at it in the frequency response on the unit circle, I can write it as magnitude of T E of J omega times a phase term. Okay. So, this is nothing but the magnitude response or what we would refer to as the magnitude response of the transfer function. I can talk about a transfer function because it is now an LTI system because aliasing has been removed. So, I have um, a T. Uh, so, the relationship is that x hat of z is equal to T of z times x of z. So, basically the, the transfer function is T of z I am relating it and phi of omega is referred to as the phase response of the transfer function. So, we have the magnitude response and we have the phase response. Okay. Now, uh, comes a couple of uh, very, very uh, key observations, um, very simple but very important. The first one says if my T e of j omega, if the magnitude response is equal to c a constant okay, for all values of omega, then I do not have any magnitude distortion in my reconstructed signal because it will be x hat of z e t of magnitude t of z you can set it equal to constant uh, times. So, uh, basically uh, this means that there is no amplitude distortion. distortion in the reconstructed signal a very important one aliasing has been removed now there is a transfer function the transfer function says that there is a magnitude part and a free phase part now if there is something funny with the magnitude you will have magnitude distortion if the phase is, has got something uh, does some uh, can produce distortion that then you will have a phase distortion so you have aliasing magnitude phase three types of distortions one of them has been removed the second one can be removed only if you have uh, if you set the transfer function equal to 1 but this transfer function setting it equal to this basically means that it is an all pass function all pass function, but all pass function typically uh, the most common all pass functions that we know of are delays. right? Of course, there are filters that have a response which is very close to 1, but they are IIR filters all pass filters or IIR filters, but now I have a FIR system. Now, the question is can this FIR system be all pass, can an FIR system can be an all pass, but not a delay. You understood the question? All pass filters are IIR. The only known case of uh, FIR all pass filters are delays. So, again, there is a question mark you know, can this FIR system uh, actually turn out to be a delay? Again, uh, the answer is yes, but uh, we have not, we do not know the steps yet. So, we are basically we are following the chronological development. Uh, at this point, the question we ask is uh, uh, T of z has to be an all pass function. The, to the best of our knowledge only delays are possible and right now that may not uh, that may not even be an option. So, what about the phase? So, phase response if phi of omega is of the form a plus b omega that means it is linear in omega. So, this is the general form of what we refer to as a transfer function with linear phase. A linear phase transfer function is perfectly acceptable to us. Why? Because that tells us that x hat of z is equal to e power minus j omega. If you look at this one, 
I am just setting a equal to 0 for now because uh, a equal, uh, if a is non-zero is just a complex scale factor. Uh, e power j omega b times x of z right. So, what does this, what does this actually uh, indicate in terms of the uh, relationship uh, assuming b was a uh, integer then it says that x hat of n is equal to x of n minus b b is equal to integer okay. So, the, why linear phase this is the key because uh, if the output is a delayed version of the input then you will get linear phase. So, linear phase you know say no, no, no I want 0 phase, no, 0 phase means it is a non-causal system that is not something that uh, we, we uh, may, may be uh, uh, able to accept. So, linear phase is the best that we can do in terms of phase distortion. So, the uh, to summarize um, the key points are that we have 3 types of distortions in a 2 channel filter bank, the uh, first one is aliasing distortion okay that is represented by A of z only if and if and only if A of z is, uh, is 0 then we can talk about the other one. Then the transfer function becomes T of z okay if A of z equal to 0. If a of z equal to 0 then the transfer function uh, transfer function now is T of z which are, which can have magnitude distortion if you want to eliminate this you need to you need to be you need to have an all pass function. So, to eliminate you you need to have an all pass function this basically says make sure t of z somehow is an all pass function and if you want if you have the phase distortion phase distortion that that will be eliminated if t of z has got linear phase okay so this so the thought process is uh, very systematic get rid of the aliasing whatever transfer function you have can you make it look like an all pass yeah, uh, best case get linear phase. So, if you can show that T of z somehow becomes a delay then perfect because it is all pass it also gives a linear phase but uh, but the question is it is it is uh, uh, actually when you design H of z you design it to be a low pass filter and then uh, the uh, H 1 has to be designed as an all pass filter um, as a high pass filter. Now, taking them and uh, constructing this uh, T of z uh, has no control over whether the output will come out to be a delay or not. So, right now this is uh, this is this is where we are. So, uh, let us now uh, spend a few minutes trying to analyze what has happened in the two channel filter bank. So, the mathematical framework is now in place uh, we now want to get the insights. So, uh, the pictorial representation this is usually the best way to get the insights okay and all we are going to invoke here at this point is our ability to down sample a signal down sample a signal up sample a signal okay. So, uh, here is a starting point uh, this takes a little bit of time to draw but uh, it is it is worth the effort okay. I am going to have two filters H naught and H 1 which are approximately of same bandwidth. So, which means that uh, uh, around somewhere around uh, pi by 2 they, sh they should cross over, but there is no other constraint. If my input signal input signal is Nyquist sampled then I, I have a uh, information content all the way from 0 to pi that is the input signal. Now, I want to look at the first filter crosses over like this, second filter crosses over there okay somewhere around the halfway point. So, the portion of the signal that has been picked up by the low pass filter that is x naught E of j omega. So, uh, this is this is H naught let me use the same colors red is H naught, blue is H 1, green is X okay, that is the input signal. 
Okay. So the uh, first part that we want uh, want to pick up is uh, what does the signal x naught look like? X naught e of j omega. So this is the portion pi. Notice that there is a uh, part of the signal which uh, is captured between uh, in the pass band without any distortion. Okay, and then the transition band occurs. So which means from that point on it will it will drop. That's the portion of the input that is captured by uh, H naught filter H naught, and it it will have a copy on the other side at two pi. So if you have uh, this as 2 pi, then uh, this is pi, there is a copy of the signal which is mirror image to this, okay. So make sure you draw it symmetrically, you can do it better than me, okay. So uh, the uh, other one is the portion of the signal that is picked up by H1. Again, uh, it may seem like we are doing something which is uh, fairly basic, but very important that we are able to do it because uh, this actually gives us the insight that we need to actually design these systems 3 pi by 2 and 2 pi okay now please uh, draw the spectrum of x1 x1 has the following structure pi pi by 2 3 pi by 2 it is a portion of the signal that is picked off by H1. H1 also has got a part that is uh, uh, without any, which basically preserves the input signal because it is equal to 1, okay. And then there is a transition band. So in the transition band, you will see a, a, a sloping part basically it will, and then the rest of the portion will get signal will get cut off. So here again, it will be symmetric. So, I have two portions, the two filters have picked off the respective portions of the signal and have uh, and these are of the order of 2 pi, the, uh, the, uh, the total bandwidth that, that we are talking about uh, is of the order of, uh, so that we can uh, actually uh, sorry of the order of uh, pi by, uh, we, so we can do the down sampling by a factor of 2. So again so sufficient uh, condition is that uh, the, uh, the net bandwidth is uh, 2 pi over m m is equal to 2. So, the total bandwidth, this is uh, first one has got bandwidth of pi, the second one has got bandwidth of pi. So, I can do the down sampling, okay. So, uh, uh, first step is the uh, the down sampling of x naught. So, uh, x naught down sampled, we labeled it as v naught, v naught e of j omega, okay. So, please uh, sketch that v naught e of j omega first of all says that there is a scale factor of one half. So we have to uh, take that into account. So basically the signal will go down in terms of spectrum and it will get stretched. It will get stretched all the way to pi. So it is something of this type, okay. It is down and then stretched. There is a shifted version of it. this is also present. So this is uh, the k equal to 0 version of the spectrum, this is k equal to 1. So basically you have the, uh, okay. So this is the down sampled signal. Down sampled signal has got, uh, has got this overlap and therefore there is some aliasing happening at this point. We do not know yet, we need to analyze, but uh, for now this is it. So can you draw the corresponding, uh, this signal down sampled. So this is V1 E of J omega, this is X1 E of J omega. So if I down sample it, again I get a scale, scaling factor of half and there is a stretching 
and of course there is a shifted shifted version also so uh, uh, very important that we are able to uh, uh, draw it uh, draw it correctly and then be able to uh, draw the uh, the scaled version as well so if you uh, go, go ahead and uh, do the careful uh, um, uh, reconstruct uh, the uh, drawing of this uh, basically go through the stretching process and the shifting process what you would find is that uh, we have the, the following signals present. There is pi, pi by 2, pi 3 pi by 2 okay and there is a stretching by a factor of 2 and also the shifted version. So basically you stretch by a factor of 2 and, um, and apply the shifted version what you find is that you get a version of the signal scaled version crossing over. So uh, basically there is a scale factor of half okay be uh, very careful uh, how we uh, do that uh, uh, and basically uh, generate the, if, you, if you were to remember how we did the down sampling uh, what did we do we first replicated by shifted versions of it and then stretched it. So if you do the uh, shifted version you will get a copy of the signal here so you will get a copy of the signal which is here for the shifted version and then you stretch it that means then that that is when you get this portion okay. So be careful when you do the down sampling of a band pass signal you have to be uh, make sure that you get the correct scaling of the frequencies. This next step is uh, straightforward from V0 and V1 get the up sampled signals that is uh, fairly straightforward let me just quickly sketch that. So the, the spectrum of V0 replicated twice the scale factor of one half is still present. So this is pi by 2, pi, 3 pi by 2 and 2 pi. So the uh, shapes are again you can probably draw it much better than I can. I won't look for perfection at least the representation is uh, uh, reasonably close okay. So this is this portion of it is one half x naught e of j omega okay. This is one half x naught of minus e of j omega the shifted version Okay. So basically uh, uh, this is what gets uh, presented uh, when, when we have the uh, up sampled signal. On to this I am applying f, uh, f, f naught of z. So f naught of z is a low pass filter is a low pass filter which will have some response of that type. So the first copy of the signal goes through that is what we want the it also picks up a portion of x of minus z that is where the problem occurs. So the uh, the part that uh, uh, we need to uh, we need to eliminate is the portion of the spectrum which is contributed by the, the following term x naught e of uh, minus e of j omega okay x naught minus e of j omega multiplied by f naught e of j omega. Okay, what is that basically it is the inter intersection of this red filter with the green line but the, the, sec the shifted version. So what we get is something of the form it is around pi by 2 I will get some sort of a bump okay. This is the unwanted portion that is coming through the upper branch and of course there is a uh, similar uh, copy of the filter on the other side this is also the unwanted portion. Now uh, very quickly let us do the other signal just for completeness uh, I am sure you will be able to do it on your own but uh, please do try it out on your own as well. This is just for completeness pi by 2, 3 pi by 2 basically uh, we said that the shape of the signal is of this type. The shifted version is going to be. Okay, that is a shifted uh, sorry 
the shifted version is going to be of this type okay. Now I have to this I have to apply the, the uh, filter F1 it is a high pass filter. So the high pass filter will have a response which basically goes from in this direction and there is a desired portion that is uh, that is captured uh, I want to look at what is the undesired part that is captured by the lower branch. The undesired portion that is captured by the lower branch is represented by x1 minus e of j omega multiplied by f1 e of j omega and that turns out to be also centered around pi by 2 a shape that looks like this and another one that also is in the frequency content okay. Now why does the signal go to 0 elsewhere on one side uh, because the filter itself goes to 0. On the other side also the unwanted portion of the spectrum. So uh, basically the unwanted portion is, is what uh, uh, we are looking at. So that, that uh, this is the wanted portion. So this is the I will put a tick mark for the wanted portion. This is the wanted portion, wanted portion. This is the unwanted part, this is the unwanted part. So the unwanted part filtered is what is here. Now notice that when we, when we achieve aliasing cancellation what is actually happening these two unwanted portions are cancelling each other okay. Now what is uh, what is passing through from the uh, up, uh, up, upper uh, from the upper branch what is passing through is the following signal is a signal that is uh, of this form and something which is okay that is what is passing through from the upper branch. From the lower branch the signal passing through signal passing through is something that looks like this and the combination of these two is the resultant reconstructed signal. So uh, it has all of the frequency uh, components but the combination of these two may have magnitude distortion we do not know may have phase distortion again that is the part that uh, we, we would have to uh, we would have to deal with. Now we have to uh, take the next step. So at this point uh, we look at the problem and we say okay what are the options that are left to us okay. Uh, can I do something with the filter design? H0 and H1 because obviously I am trying to get uh, uh, the T of Z to become a delay. So yes I would like to explore the option of the, uh, the, the, delay, uh, the T of Z. So when you start going in that direction I have to solve a magnitude problem, I have to solve a phase problem distortion. So to eliminate one of them I, can, I will try to see whether I can restrain myself to linear phase filters. H of Z, H0 of Z must be a linear phase filter. If I say that if my resultant comes out to be linear phase the T of Z turns out to be linear phase then I am in good shape. The answer is it may be sort of obvious that uh, that is the right way to go because if H0 and H1 are constrained to be linear phase the product of them will be linear phase and therefore I am kind of moving in the right direction. So I will explore that option uh, as one thing. The other option that we want to uh, want to explore is hey, we have we are multi rate signal processing okay we have done polyphase component so well you know can i do something in the polyphase component domain split h not of z into polyphase components into two polyphase components and see if there is a better insight that's possible too right we we can say that uh, you know maybe rather than dealing with the filters since anyway down sampling is going to happen i may want to look at it in the polyphase uh, domain no that is a second option so we will look at it uh, both from the polyphase approach and from the linear phase approach so quickly brush up your you know there are four types of linear phase filters uh, we will be looking at type 2 linear phase filters and we will justify why. So in case you are uh, not uh, forgotten them just look at what type 2 linear phase looks like. The other option is can you redraw this figure the two channel filter bank case can you redraw this in terms of the polyphase components with the following constraint okay. So this is the task for you to do uh, the task is the two channel maximally decimated filter bank maximally decimated filter bank okay you do polyphase components polyphase components with the following constraint 
do type 1 for the analysis filters, analysis filter bank, filter bank, you do type 2 for the uh, synthesis filter bank, synthesis filter bank and then uh, do apply the noble identities because you will, it will lend itself to uh, applying the noble identities and obtain the simplified structure resultant structure. So, if you can come prepared to sort of with the resultant structure one step the polyphase component uh, uh, part we can address uh, resultant structure. The other one is uh, come with the expression for type 2 linear phase filters. We plug in we see what is the condition that we get. So, the answer the uh, key question is how do we solve do either of these options give us a solution where we can satisfy x hat of z is equal to c times z minus n naught x of z or in other words x hat of n equal to c times x of n minus n naught. Why is this? Because this is what we refer to as perfect reconstruction. You are reconstructing it to within a scale factor and a delay, perfect reconstruction. So, ideally we would like to achieve perfect reconstruction when there is no signal compression and other things, just the synthesis filters and so this is our ultimate goal, no aliasing, no aliasing T e of j omega equal to c times e power minus j omega n naught, that is it, Scons uh, scale factor, uh, linear phase and then we achieve the result that we are looking for okay. So, we stop here, uh, but please do uh, try the uh, polyphase implementation as well as a review of the type 2 linear phase filters that will be very helpful for us in ne the next class. Type 2 linear phase in Oppenheim and Schaefer, it is present. Uh, the portion that we have done today is in Vaidinathan's book, P. P. Vaidinathan's book chapter 5 again uh, definitely and encourage you to read because that will sort of set the stage for everything that we are going to discuss in the next class. Thank you. <laughs>